four, they really mean three, click. We can't do that click. It's a one-way clicker. So if you say two, and you think, well, I'm really doing four, but you're actually going to do three, no problem. You turn it knob one unit, one click, now it's three units, and you get your three units of A+. Does that make sense? So you all have to sign up for two units first, and then we can add more if you, have to, if you do more work. And the nice thing about this is you can actually slow down CS3 material. If you're a new student, you really want to learn computing, CS3 is the course for non-majors. If you've never done computing at all, this is great. We also will support any EECS or LNS computing majors who need more experience. There's a minimum requirement for CS621A, our first course in computer science, which is you know some programming and some recursion. If you don't know any programming, if you want to come into 621A, you actually can need to take the three series, one of the either the lab-based or the self-paced before you move on. So, show of hands, who here is interested in the 3S course? Who am I talking to in some sense? Wow, it's like 30 people. That's great. So, here's the cool thing about that. If you don't have a rush, you can take this, you can take just the first two units, and that's it. Which means in theory, you're taking this course and speeding it down, uh, slowing it down by a factor of two. It's like driving rather than 60 miles an hour, 30 miles an hour. That's a lot slower. It's a lot harder to kind of have an accident going 30 because it's so slow, right? It's a lot harder to struggle with the material if you're only learning two units over the course of 60 weeks. It's much slower. That's great. So I recommend that to all of you who are thinking about 3S, start the two, yeah, it's required, but actually do the two. Actually intend to do the two, and that's fine. If you happen to have the time to do more, do more, but really pace yourself for the two. That'd be great. Why not? Here's the cool thing. Then you come back and say, well, Dan, does that mean I can only get two ever? No. Come on back to us next semester and take more. You're still missing two units, right? Guess what? You can just take one unit the next semester. That's one quarter speed the next semester. If you want, that's pretty cool. Take a course at quarter speed. That can fit in nicely with the other courses. That's beautiful. So we have, a, we have that flexibility in this self-paced program. That's awesome. All right. That's CS3S. That's the first flavor of all the things we offer. The second flavor is the most common, the learn a language flavor, the CS9s. And one of the things I have beep is which to take. So which course would be relevant to you? You have nine, sorry, there's eight different courses, language courses there, just like the letters on the, on the columns of a chessboard, A through H. So let's go through all of them. And in fact, historically, we started with A. We only, a long time ago, 32 years ago, we only had A. We had CS9A. That was the first course we ever offered. And then as time went on and more languages came in, we said, let's add another course. And that's a big deal for us. We've only added eight courses in 32 years. It's not like we add one every year. We decided to add the courses in that, in that order. So let me now tell you about the different courses. If you're still kind of not sure which one is appropriate for you for your applications, let me describe them and let me describe the languages, put some context to that. Just like in Ratatouille, the reviewer says, I will provide the perspective. So I will now do that for you. CS9A. 9A is MATLAB. Originally, it was in Fortran. The goal was to teach the engineers, folks in, in, uh, in not Echeverry, Echeverry next door, and other places on campus who were physicists and other things who wanted to do engineering things, big libraries, what to do. So we were teaching them Fortran years ago. And then at some point, we realized that MATLAB had really replaced Fortran for a lot of the engineers on campus. And they said, we want to learn MATLAB, not Fortran. That's, you know, that's 1970s stuff. We want to learn MATLAB. Everyone's in MATLAB now. All right. So we took the same assignments for Fortran and basically moved them over to MATLAB because they were still engineering-based assignments. It's about thinking about floating point numbers and error and, and graphs and that kind of thing. The things you do as engineers. So MATLAB is a perfect course for you if you're an engineering or physics person you want to think about that space. Pascal was the most popular language in the 1970s. It really was dominant. It was everywhere. It was awesome. In fact, our very own Mike Clancy wrote the book O Pascal and it and that book taught a generation of programmers. It's really amazing. That, that single book and the subsequent backup follow-up case study books. So Pascal is a really nice language. It, however, is somewhat dated. It really is a language from the 70s. We've learned a lot about language design and how to be a, you know, provide a more interesting interface for programmers, uh, may build nice IDEs, inter interactive development environments that we have for other languages, not so much for Pascal. So people really move past Pascal. And we, might, we should actually think about maybe retiring Pascal, because every other semester, I don't have any tutor I can hire that knows Pascal. I mean, it's that far back that unless you kind of learn, mostly internationally, you probably didn't learn Pascal going up. And so it's hard to get Pascal tutors from. It's we, close to being in a museum. Yeah, yeah it's, 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 it's dusty. You know, it's Pascal, and then you, and the dust comes yeah, up the book, and then we start opening the assignments. I mean, that's. Um, and the other interesting thing about Pascal is we, since we do, you know, it is a really solid language. The advanced placement exam used to be in Pascal. That was a really big deal. So, I mean, it's a rigorous language. It's a great language to teach computer science and data structures especially. Um, it's a typed language. Uh, I mean, we do have a Pascal tutor this semester. So if you want to take Pascal, 
I'll try to convince you out of it because realistically there's not a lot of, unless you say, Dan, I have to write this program or I have this application on edit and I need Pascal for it. Unless you say that, there's probably a better language for you here. All right, Pascal. C, uh, early 80s out of 18 TBL labs, C programming language came out of the B programming language, which came out of the A programming language. But C was the one that really hit. It's almost like the Monty Python, I built a castle and that fell over. The second one burnt down and then fell over. The third one, the third one stood. So this is the third version of this language, and it's the C. And it swept the country as Pascal did. And every single programmer, really, I mean, I should say in general, in the United States, I, don't have, I can't speak for the world, but in the United States at some point in the 80s was learning C. That, that's how dominant C was at the time. There were course, every course at every university, C was the language you taught. And until very recently, C was the language they taught at Stanford, which is a, says a lot for kind of how long, how long it takes us to think about rechanging languages. Um, C is really low level. You know, you have high level languages, which means you don't have to worry about how the machine works, how the computer works. And then there's really low level, like assembler and programming in ones and zeros. And C is about as low level as it gets before you're into machine level. It is really, before you get to assembly. So it is low, which means you have to know about how the machine works. It helps to know about how caches work. It helps to know about how arrays work and how memory is managed and all those things that we don't teach. So C is a hard language to teach it for the self-paced program because you get stuck with pointers and memory management and the people taking this and getting stuck on those, on those concepts, it's not their fault because you really do have to understand how the machine works before you can be a successful C programmer. In fact, we do teach C in our computer science series. We have an A course, a B course, a C course. It's not until our third course where we teach you basically how the computer works that we even think about introducing C. So for those of you who know how to program but don't know how machines work, C may not be the best language for you because there's a lot of the low-level details that are really hard to get unless you have the big idea of how computers work. However, that said, C is a great language for speed. If you actually want to write the fastest program out there, C is the, the language for you. There's not a single other language on this list that is as good as C in terms of being low-level. So, so Scheme is a really soft language in the sense of having padded walls. It has wonderful padded walls, meaning it's like you go to a children's playground and they have all the balls that you play with, like at Ikea, with little numbers in the back and stuff, and it's all padded. That's what Scheme is. It's really, really great. So we teach Scheme in our introductory course. We believe in it so much. Scheme is so syntactically clean. You have a left paren, a right paren, a quote, and the rest is your English. There's no other syntax in, in Scheme. It's that beautiful. And you say, that sounds really fun. I'd like to learn that then please take this 9D. All the nine series says learn a second language. I didn't say that before, but I'll say it now. Learn a second language means we assume you're a programmer before you're here. That's a really important distinction. This is not for beginners. You know how to debug. You know how to functionally decompose. You know about lots of stuff. This is your course for you, OK? So 9D scheme. 9E Unix. Unix is actually not a language. It's the single sore thumb in this whole list. The other ones are languages. 9E, uh, Unix is an operating system. Now, Dan, is it one of the, only for Linux people? No. Who owns a Macintosh here? Let's look. Mac lovers, raise the hand. Yay, Snow Leopard. Yeah. Mac runs on Linux. Mac runs on Unix. It's mock Unix. It actually is, I mean, I say Linux, I, I take that back. Mock runs on the Unix, Unix down uh, underneath. The underpinnings of the Macintosh OS are Unix. If you bring up the terminal, you're sitting in Unix. If you bring up the console window, you're sitting in Unix. It's awesome. And it's one of the reasons why Macs have fewer viruses. Also because they have a smaller market share and all the virus folks you know, hit the big elephant in the room rather than the small little gazelle. But nevertheless, it's awesome. Okay? So if you have a Mac, you should be thinking about this course. If you know a language, if you fall into the CS9 umbrella, though you can actually you know enough of a language to be able to take one of these courses, 9E is for you. I really encourage you to do that. I think 90 is the coolest course here. I, by the way, I'll give you some, some background. I used to be a tutor. So I was actually the person who would work at the center and help the students. So I was doing this, and I love 90. I actually didn't, I, I kind of was, I was a Linux person on my desktop, but I wasn't, I didn't know enough about it until I was a tutor. And I said, let me learn about this 90. And I taught myself kind of over the summer, over the semester, and I learned about it. I said, this is amazing. All these cool things I didn't know about. The big idea of Unix is to be able to solve a problem, you take all these little teeny tools and you stitch them together in just really clever ways. And so there's a million small tools and you can pipe them together and pump them together and clobber them together and duct tape wrap our whole thing and the whole thing works. It's awesome and stable. This is what folks do who are in the IT departments in the back rooms maintaining servers and that kind of thing. They're often running Unix scripts to keep things clean and keeping, keep things really good. The Unix programmers of the campus, you'll, you can see them as they walk because they walk with the strut. They kind of do, do, do. And they walk with a little, with a, the chest is high and they walk with a kind of a 